The following presentation is a gift from the team at Streamline Publishing, publishers of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plain Air Magazine, and weekly newsletters Fine Art Today, Realism Today, Plain Air Today, and American Watercolor, and events, the Plain Air Convention and the Figurative Art Convention. We offer over 400 different art instruction tutorials in ultra high quality video by the world's leading artists. If you like what you see, help us support our artists and our team with your purchase. Each video aired has a special discount code for today only in the comments section with a link to the video offered. And to see everything we do, or if you want to receive notice of new releases, new products, and new events for artists, simply click the other link, which says, see everything we do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazines. Today's video, in a timely manner, with Gene Chambers. You're going to love learning how to do this still life. Hello, I'm Jean Chambers. I just finished this painting behind me. I started this one a little bit different than a, a just a value block in because I only had a short while to paint the roses before they changed. Um, <clears throat> but I think you'll find it interesting. Um, I do paint a lot of things this way. It's just according to what the objects are, if they're going to wait for me or not. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. Titanium white, yellow ochre pale, cadmium yellow pale, transparent oxide yellow, cad yellow deep, cadmium orange, cobalt blue, cadmium red, cadmium red deep, alizarin crimson, transparent oxide red, viridian, and ivory black. My brushes are a variety of bristle brushes. I have fan brushes flats, filberts, I have um, royal sables in uh, flats, and some sable, small sables. I may use uh, others, but they're all in this, these families. My canvas is a lead as an oil primed canvas. It's 16 by 20. And I'm going to start this painting a little bit different than I do some of my paintings because the pink roses will wilt in a hurry and it's really important to get those in. So I'll be starting in that area, get the roses in, and I'll be working out like a spoke probably. So if you're wondering why I'm not blocking everything in like you've seen me do before in workshops, that's my reason. First I'm going to put a real light wash of transparent oxide yellow and viridian just to knock down the white. I'm using odorless paint thinner. Now I'm going to be thinking about my placement, probably making a few little marks of where things are going to be, just so I make sure I don't run out of room. So my first rows will be here, next one in this area. This one is a little lower than that one. It'll be in that area stems and leaves coming out here the clock be in this area the 
of the rows in this area. My little pitcher comes right in here. So, the clock, I think that'll be a nice composition. I'll have this drape coming down here, going over here. Okay. And I'm using, I use Viva paper towels and I use these little store brand table napkins that come in a 200 pack because they're real convenient. They're already torn off. Okay. So this area is going to be where I start. I'm going to, I'll be trying to pretty much finish as I go, even though I'm sure there'll be things that I'll go back to. Uh, because when you get everything covered, things sometimes just look a little different. Okay. I'm squinting, comparing things. I know what my darkest thing is going to be, even though I'm not putting it on there. I just want to get my pretty roses in before anything happens. I'm using uh, titanium white and alizarin crimson right now. Just doing a real blocky shape. Now I'm going to add a little transparent oxide yellow with this mixture to get a shadow color and a touch, just a touch of Viridian. This is for this stem end because it has a little grainish area in here. That wash would almost work for it. Now I'll be putting a little cobalt blue into that mixture for my the underside of it. A touch of transparent oxide yellow just to gray it down a little bit so it won't be too purple. Picked up a little more red alizarin for this area here. Now I'm going back to transparent oxide yellow and viridian and white. A little lighter.
Viridian Yellow Ochre Pale. A little touch of Cad Yellow Pale. A little more white. A little more white, a little more yellow, just to catch this one that is lighter. This is um, trans, uh, transparent oxide red and viridian to get this, punch this little dark hole down here. I'm squinting and comparing how how much lighter this little petal is than this dark here. Still, all the way through the painting, I'll be painting values and comparing one thing to another thing. And drawing. Drawing, always drawing. I see a real pretty clean red under there, so I'm using just some alizarin, but it's picking up the white, so it's not quite as dark as it would be. It's just pure. Now I'm going into the shadow color again, the transparent oxide yellow, alizarin, and cobalt blue, and white. It's a little too yellow. Now have the underside of that petal is it's light light but it's still cooler or blue. See so if I can get a tiny enough value difference to make it show there. 
here. These are all the same mixtures. I'm just, I'm using the same colors. I'm just using a little bit different amounts of one and the other to make the different petals. This is not just exactly where it needs to be. It needs to be a little bit lower. Now I'm going back to my petal color. Put a little transparent, transparent oxide yellow here where it turns under. These are tiny little pieces of paint, but they make it look like what it is, so they're important. This is um, transparent oxide yellow and cobalt blue with white. Needs to be a little bit warmer, a little more yellow in it.
roses kind of have a life of their own because they are laws of their own, I should say. They, their petals are translucent, so if you're seeing the underside, you're seeing light where you would normally see shadow in something that was opaque. And it can be very close value, so it's kind of a value challenge. This is more cobalt blue and transparent oxide yellow. I'll be using in my drapery areas. Keep it simple mixtures. The shadow side will lean towards the yellow and the light side will lean towards the blue because I'm painting under cool light which makes warm shadows. If your shadows are, if your light is cool, your shadows will be warm. So you won't have to think about whether they're warm or cool, they just will be. It's just little, little tiny pieces of value. And the more values that you get on your canvas that are right, the easier it gets because you have more things to judge against. And when you're squinting, you're, you're comparing. You're squinting down and comparing one thing to another thing, asking yourself questions like, how dark is this compared to that? Or how light is this compared to that? So if you have five things on your canvas, you have five things to compare. If you only have one thing and you start one more thing, then it's not as easy as when you have a bunch. But it's important to get your values right, and then you don't have to go back and adjust everything. You will inevitably have to adjust some things, or I do, but not nearly as many if I'm conscious and try to get it conscious of what I'm doing and try to get it right the first time. That didn't work. <sighs> if you do put a wrong color, a wrong value on your canvas and you know it's wrong, don't just leave it on there hoping that it'll go away because it's not going to go away and it'll, it'll haunt you. It's better to take the time and get it, make it right.
Now I'm going to mix cobalt blue and alizarin, just a little white, a little touch of transparent oxide yellow to gray it down and get my purple trim in there. You have to paint some of the preliminary things, some of the things that are surrounding these roses to get to, to get the roses in there. I can see places on the petals where it, the light is already changing because something is drooping or moving. It's not staying exactly how it was. So that's why it's important for me to concentrate on these roses and then I won't try to run around and paint what's what wasn't there earlier. I'll just I'll just know that it has changed. Okay, now come down to this other one. It has a nice leaf under it, and it's too close. Let's see. Have a leaf here, leaf here, here, here. So there's my rose. Painting pink roses or anything really light, it's really, well, it's important to keep your paint clean with anything you're painting, but you can't paint your roses with dirty paint. That paint had green in it, so I'm going to leave it over there for later. And take this white away. Okay. This one is very pale.
I'm still working on my placement of where this rose is going to be. I'm pick, picking up just just a touch of cobalt blue in with my alizarin and white mixture. Very light and close to the same values, the canvas, but when I paint things around it, it'll start coming out. All these roses have, as many roses as, as I've painted, they all have their own little personalities and little things that are different about them. So your drawing is really important. So that you don't paint all roses to look just like, just alike. They're, they'll be boring. This one has a little petal that's dying, and it has a different color, but it's really, really pretty. This was what made me want to paint the whole, this whole thing of roses was this petal. People are always asking me what makes me want to paint. And I usually want to paint when I have something really pretty on my still life stand. If it's pretty up there and it looks like a painting, I think half the work's over and I know I can paint it. That's my motivation. But you do get little ideas when you see something in the floor shop or whatever, find an apple with some leaves on it and they'll tear them off before you can buy them. <laughs> okay. It's got a really pretty shadow from the little green thing. I can't think what you call them now.
Okay, I'm going to paint some of the other the leaves and things around this and see how it's going to look. Using transparent oxide red and yellow with some green. I'll be going back and forth with different little mixtures of it. It's a little lighter there. I'll put a little yellow ochre pale in with it. Too much. Okay, I'm still just painting little pieces of value, changing values slightly where I see it. something darker, changing back lighter if I see something lighter, and trying to concentrate real hard on my drawing. There's a lot of stuff going on in that little area. Picking up a little blue and with that mixture for the leaves. Okay, now I have a shadow, a leaf that is in partial shadow and partial light. Because the rose is sitting on it. Let's see, I'll just...
a little more white. see a lot of blue in the shadows, but I can't go too blue. Okay, I'm going to start on the petal, whatever you call that thing. I'm adding a little cobalt, a little uh, Cadmium yellow pale. It wasn't enough to make a difference. Still a value difference. I'm going to work up this way so I can make it to this petal of that rose. I can tell about where it's going to be, but if I put these other pieces of paint in there and work my way up, I'll, I'll know that it's going to fit. Rose leaves are really fascinating. Some of them are on the underside. Some are, are kind of a dusty pink and some are blue. They're just really interesting. This one's turned over, so I'm seeing the underside of it. The light's catching part of it and making it look pink, or pinker than it is in the shadow.
I'm still just judging values, one thing against another thing. If it's, I see something light back there, I'm thinking, how light is it? How much lighter is it than the things next to it? If you can put those pieces of paint the right value in the right place, you've got it made. And that's saying a mouthful. <laughs> but it's true, and that's why drawing is so important, because putting down these pieces of paint is drawing. Adding some more cadmium yellow pale to the viridian and transparent yellow mixture. That's a little too yellow. More white and more viridian. That's good. I could have a lot of different greens on my palette, but I found that I can mix everything I need to mix with some mixture of a viridian and some other colors. So it's a simple, it's a way to simplify things for me. It's just to have the one grain on the palette. Of course, I have blue, so I can make a green out of that too if I need to. Okay, clean off. Clean my white off. This one is a little, I see a little more color, a little more um, alizarin in this one. So it looks good up there. I'll try to make it look good up here. If you were just looking at that one piece, you'd never know it's a rose, but with the other roses around and the leaves and all that, we'll, our brains will say, oh, that's a rose back there. Okay, and it has a little petal shadow that I can see.
I'm going to move back down to this one for just a minute because I want to straighten that little want to make that look prettier. That's what I want to do. Now I'll pick up a little blue, a little alizarin, a little transparent oxide yellow and white. for my shadow back here. There's a leaf coming over and making a shadow there. I want to keep it as light as I can. Okay. Now I'll get this in and then I'll take a little break and step back and Make sure that I've got my roses placed right and how close I'm getting with the values. Then I can start radiating out because I'll have the critical stuff except for some of the leaves. And I know I'll just make a mental note of this one that it's up about here so that if they droop, I can still put them in there. Okay, I'm going to step back, take a break, and look at it. Start putting my little pattern in here. I can shape my rows a little better now that I'm painting around it on this side. I love painting this little cream pitcher. It's uh, something I picked up in a, a little thing, kind of like a flea market in England. And I only paid a few pence.
Okay. Just want to be sure I got my little shape right up there for my petal. This one comes out this way. Still squinting, thinking values. I can see a very dark place between this pot and that rose, and it's and it's reddish because there's some little red berries back there. But they're way back in the shadow. Also have some baby's breath over there, but I'm going to leave a little space, but I'll paint it later. I'm squinting, comparing things. I know what my darkest thing is going to be, even though I'm not putting it on there. I just want to get my pretty roses in before anything happens. This is for this stem end because it has a little greenish area in here. That wash would almost work for it. Viridian yellow ochre pale, little touch of cad yellow pale, a little more white. Okay, now. I'm going to work on this uh, creamer a little bit. Still using cobalt blue and transparent 
oxide yellow. Okay, I'm going to see how light I can go. without going to pure white. Let's see where I've got some light leaves and some dark leaves. They make this connection here from these to tabletop itself. Okay, now I'll start on the numbers. This is a Roman numeral thing. Let's see if I can get them close to the right size. I just finished this painting behind me. I started this one a little bit different than a uh, just a value block in because I only had a short while to paint the roses before they changed. Um, <clears throat> but I think you'll find it interesting. Um, I do paint a lot of things this way. It's just according to what the objects are, if they're going to wait for me or not. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.
that video is called In a Timely Manner, and it's Gene Chambers. And you can learn more about it at lilyartvideo.com. And remember, there's a special discount code in the comments section. Make sure to take advantage of that today only. All right. Thank you for watching. I'm Eric Rhodes.